Hi, uh, I'm Austin Hester, and today I'll be giving my presentation on the security concerns for autonomous driving. So what we'll look into is the various threats to autonomous vehicles. Um, we'll investigate mitigations just kind of back and forth as we jump from topic to topic. Uh, and then we're going to introduce a, uh, an evaluation platform that people are thinking up recently, uh, like different tests we can do to ensure the security of these autonomous vehicles. Uh, so the, uh, the paper that I'm presenting today is the security of autonomous driving, threats, defenses, and future directions. Uh, you can find that on IEEE. Uh, the link is there. Uh, so there's various uh, attack surfaces in, uh, in cars and especially autonomous or even like self-correcting safety feature. Uh, a lot of them have sensors, uh, so we'll look into attacks on these sensors. Uh, so the first one we'll look into is GPS uses microwaves. Uh, it's got a large range like from space, so... This, uh, and that helps with navigation. So the, the next few are similar in like how they work, but different types of waves are used. So with light, LIDAR, we have like IR lasers and they the precise uh, like object, like they can recognize where an object is. So that's helpful for like fine detail. Uh, so similar to that, they kind of bounce and then reflect back, have a reading. So we have millimeter wave radars, which use microwaves. Um, these are longer range because they're, uh, you know, but they're less detailed because of that. So that's more for like larger collision avoidance and like knowing how fast to go based on who's in front of you. Uh, the smallest version of this is like the, like the ultrasonic sensor uh, bounces back like sound waves. Um, it's mainly for slow speeds like parking. Uh, and then the last one's a camera that uh, has object detection and can just like kind of see the lanes. It's pretty important in a, for self-driving car. So we'll first look into the GPS threat. So jamming, of course, we're gonna see a lot of, uh, so you just kind of jam the, the receiver with like a stronger signal that prevents them from hearing their real signal. Uh, spoofing is a little bit more you jam or like synchronize with the signal uh, and kind of insert false information. Uh, a bit more complicated attack is uh, nulling. So you send like the opposite waveform. Uh, so it's like phase cancellation here. So we have a sine wave. We have the opposite of that just cancels out at the peaks. They're opposite. So it averages out to just a flat line or no signal. Uh, some mitigations we can for use for GPS is uh, like using machine learning or like signal processing just to kind of detect these types of attacks. Like we can feed it like data when these attacks are happening so it can better detect those. Uh, one thing for GPS is you can read like which angle the signal comes at. So you can validate that it's coming from uh, the angle that you have been like tracking. Uh, so then we can also embed like Mac codes into GPS signal to kind of embed digital signatures. Uh, so we'll look into LIDAR. So these use lasers, uh, like back, shoot a laser, see how far it takes to come back. But someone can use like a transceiver to take in that light and absorb it and then wait a little bit and send it back just to kind of mess with it and insert kind of like false objects so that they might swerve out just out of control. Uh, jamming. You're going to see that on pretty much all of these. Uh, 
pretty common thing. It's easy to avoid. You just have to move away from the, the malicious signal. Uh, so the mitigations for this is you have to be very synchronized with this. So you can reduce like the angle to see. So if their transceiver is like over here and then it shoots to light here, but you trade off sensitivity. So you won't be able to see as many, like as much of your surroundings. Uh, you can also reduce like the timing so you can cut off the reception, but that trade up trades off the range of the, the LIDAR. Uh, and what we can do is randomly pulse both like pulse intervals and just directions, just kind of choose one through or zero through C 55 or nine. <laughs> but, uh, you know, just kind of shoot all over the place and kind of, in a way that you remember or the computer remembers. So the attacker can't synchronize with randomness. Uh, for that, we need kind of uh, cryptographic uh, random number generators for that. Um, well, not, I don't know, something physical like that, just that could help, but it might as well use the stronger <laughs> if you can. Uh, the redundancy, so we can have multiple lasers to kind of mitigate this, but right now the LIDARs are expensive. Uh, so it's pretty much same things with millimeter wave radars. So you just jam and you lower the signal to noise ratio so they have a harder time receiving and like understanding theirs. Uh, just insert virtual obstacles. Uh, same randomness mitigation, redundancy with millimeter wave radars is uh, a lot more achievable because they're a lot cheaper. Uh, so echolocation uh, with these ultrasonic sensors. So these are kind of easy to jam uh, more so than the, the last two. Um, and you can cloak like sound absorbing, like people in studios have the sound absorbing, I don't know, cones or triangles there. Uh, you can kind of mess with it if you put that on your bumper. Uh, redundancy is easy, easily achievable with these. These are can, like, considerably more cheap than uh, the last two. Uh, and you can also somehow use waveform uh, like transformations to embed digital signatures when you start and when you start uh, transmission. Uh, so for cameras, these are kind of a big part. Uh, so cameras, they use those for object recognition. And like, is that a tree or a, like a traffic post? Uh, so you can actually shine very bright lights at these and that will blind the camera like temporarily. Um, lasers can do a little bit more damage and then, uh, oops. I messed up. I'll find it. Yeah, so strobing can confuse cameras. Uh, and powerful light lasers can uh, do like permanent damage to some cameras like some mitigations we can use for that is uh, uh, redundancy cameras we can use more of. So let me check this. So yeah, so you could use uh, like powerful lights to blind cameras. Uh, strobing can cause confusion to cameras in the recording. It's being confused right now. Uh, so you can get permanent damage from powerful lasers. Uh, let's see. That's better. 
So these are difficult to mitigate, but uh, we can use redundant cameras. We can lens filters to filter infrared, like lasers. Um, photochromatic lenses, like normally like transition lenses you get for your glasses, but we can use those to reduce glare and help see better when it's very bright. Uh, so this is kind of an overview of these. Um, take a look at this and pause if you want to look at it. Oh, so the next uh, attack surface we'll look into is the in vehicle systems, like the like your keyless entry, especially. So the first one is the vehicle immobilizer attack. Uh, so you want to get into and start a car, but you don't have the key or a copy of the key. Uh, you just kind of want to break in to like using like known exploits and find a private key. Um, and override the anti-theft system. Uh, so there's a wide range of attacks for this. Uh, relay, replay, man in the middle, among others. Uh, but mainly these are, cars are targeted with like known exploits. Um, so consider like searching into like the, the security of their locking and anti-theft systems. Uh, so there's these are more involved attacks like involving like cryptanalysis. So I'm not going to go too much into it, um, but here are some the attack surfaces. So uh, these hit tag two and Megamos they they don't use cryptographically secure like random number generators. So those are targeted a lot um, in cars that use those. Uh, so yeah, so use cryptographic. Uh, algorithms and crypt storage of uh, like just and so the master key is used to program the, the actual key fob so if those were compromised or something they could reset those that would not be a good thing uh, and I don't know if this is achievable with like older cars but new model cars could have like regular firmware updates that happen over like a GPS signal they have to be, they can download it over a period of time. But, uh, so we'll look into the keyless set entry system. Uh, so we want to kind of interfere with this signal. So so when you're close to your car, you just put your uh, uh, hand like into the handle and it beeps and unlocks for you. So that's the, that's using RFID and it's like the, the passive entry. And then it also has the, the longer range when you press the button. So that can be, the, and there's the physical key as well, as well but we'll look mainly into the, the, the RFID and the, the UHD components. Um, so for jamming, so you can just kind of probably get one on the internet, something like jams, these types of like RFID uh, transmissions. Uh, so, like, if they're not paying attention, then they, they might not realize that they didn't lock their car when they pressed the button. But you can just always, uh, like, yeah, listen for the sound of the lock and the beep. And it might be difficult if you're deaf. That would, I haven't thought of that yet. Uh, so, replay attack. So, you can eavesdrop this signal instead of jamming it uh, and, like, record the, the lock signal or unlock signal. Um, yeah, so you could like jam the lock signal and then play it again and lock the car, make it confusing when they come back and their stuff is gone, but their car is locked and not broken into. Um, but you can also add a, like a sequence number to these attacks. So you can't just replay the same attack over and over and over. You'd have to jam it and record it at the same time in order to do it. If, uh, these were, like use a sequence number and you could use an encrypted channel uh, and just kind of look around and make sure nobody's like holding like a little radar gun at you when you're walking away from your car. Uh, so relay attacks, these are pretty cool. Um, 
So you put an antenna on the, the car and then you have some other guy walk around and follow the car owner and then relay the signal further and has a fairly large range if you use strong enough antennas. But mitigation is just be careful. Like don't, if someone's walking on like following you around with a giant antenna sticking out of their backpack is probably should get away from them. Um, but we can also use like electromagnetic shields and like remove the battery, but that trades off convenience. Like that's, we have the passive entry for a reason. So we don't have to get our keys out and also use distance bounding using like rapid, uh, transmissions to judge like latency. You can judge the distance using that. Uh, crypt analysis is similar to those vehicle immobilizer attacks. It's possible, but these other attacks are easier to achieve. And the sequence does not because it's not encrypted, even if when they are it, using the sequence. This is just a summary. Uh, best way to prevent these is common sense and just be wary of strangers following you. Uh, if you're really worried about it, just get one of those shield bags and you have to take it out when you want to get in your car. Uh, voice control systems. I'll go over these a little bit, but it, three modules. You got voice capture, uh, speech recognition, and command execution. Uh, so the common attack on these is to use like ultrasonic speakers to kind of launch these commands uh, inaudibly. Um, so we can make uh, our hardware and software better. So we can, there's this one algorithm for liveness detection. It detects your the popping sound of your breath. Uh, this, which requires more sensitive microphones and this, uh, yeah, the pop noise location processing. Uh, so we'll go over these in vehicle protocols, which have been around for a while. Um, but there's some flaws with the controller area network. This is what you plug into your ODB2 port. Uh, with design without security, enables replay attacks, uh, no auth, no encryption. Um, use collision avoidance with priority based. And since it enables replay attacks with that uh, it's easy to perform a denial of service attack by just replaying that high priority message the, yeah, in the ODB2 port, but you can get direct access with no author encryption. So the the local internet interconnect network uh, LIN uh, complements can. It's more for like body control, like your seats, doors, mirrors. Uh, like if somebody like puts your seat down all the way while you're like going on the highway, that could be dangerous. It puts it forward. Uh, no collision detection, so you can kind of just throw messages at it, and sometimes it'll take someone's turn. Uh, so use encryption authentication, and for both the CAN and then we can use like a captive portal or gateway to facilitate all those. And in that gateway, use anomaly detection to prevent those those attacks. We didn't talk about flex ray. It's similar to CAN, but um, similar uh, flaws. So these are more future directions. Uh, so we'll look into like self-driving cars. You use like deep learning. Uh, possible like target like collet like you could misclassify something if your your model's not trained properly and not tested enough. Uh, so mitigations for this is just kind of just keep improving our neural networks, like our deep neural networks, uh, more rigorous training and testing, especially. Uh, and a lot, yeah, just working on it more. Um, malicious actors, you could use any of those like attacks on the sensors. Uh, we had talked about, I um, mean, you could put like fake traffic signs up and like confuse cars when they're training and 
you might even be able to teach like a bunch of them to stop at this random location. You stand there and see one of those self-driving cars and aim your stop sign. Uh, some mitigations, you can use anomaly detection. And what I thought was cool is you can like play like a, a blur, a Gaussian blur to just that perception region. So you can like blur out just one part of your vision. Uh, and like harden all sensors using like known mitigations. Uh, data privacy should always be concerned. Um, tracking the location and where they're going and how often they're traveling to be considered sensitive data. So mitigations, you could add like a chosen noise to the training model before you send it in that the model knows to expect uh, and can like invert. Well, that wouldn't be. <laughs> or you invert in the... Uh, its output, you know. That's still inverted. I don't know what I'm saying. <laughs> a federated learning architecture is kind of like decentralized data ownership. Um, so implementation threats. So we have some various like hardware, uh, tensor processing units, ASICs, uh, FPGAs. Um, so these facilitate like the deep learning and all the processing these self-driving cars are gonna have to do. Um, so best mitigation is to con consider security in the initial design of all these systems. Back when they were designing the ODB2 port, they didn't really think about that as much. Um, and you can use uh, trusted execution enclaves, uh, which AMD and Intel use in their processors at a smaller level, but implement that, which would be more difficult because you can always get physical access through wires and buses. Uh, so I think I could spend too much time on the, but this is a, a paper to check out, a security evaluation platform for autonomous driving. I just have some figures. Um, so if you want to look at the slides or pause the video and check this out, I just grabbed some of the most interesting figures. So what's next? So I'm doing the hands-on project. Um, so we're gonna, I got a bunch of sensors and uh, gonna hook it up to like, uh, well, first I'm gonna like mess with the sensors with the Raspberry Pi and just kind of try some of these attacks like using some of the other transmitters. Um, See if I can't jam like a small small scale sensor, uh, and after that, so for the hands on project, I'm gonna try to add some of these sensors to an RC car, and try to build like a self driving prototype using like the more resilient uh, sensors. So that's all. Thank you.